Well, good day. Welcome back to the shop. So, today's mission, actually, I get a day in the shop today that I'm not drilling bloody holes for the shed. If I never drill another hole in my life, it'll still be too soon. So, I thought, let's make the finger rest tooth rest for the tool and cutter grinder. But I never got to that. <laughs> Bloody Bruce Whitham came in with this flogged out shaft and gear, so I'll give him a hand out and I'll do that, sort that out for him. So let's take a look. I've just had this dropped in my lap from another machinist. He's just had an operation so he can't do it himself. So you can see the gear goes on the shaft. Fits like a cock in a shirt sleeve. So we have to take care of this, so we need to build the shaft up and machine the bore and the gear oversized just to get the thing going again as the parts are ex-Germany, so they're a couple of weeks away, so we'll do a build up on the shaft, recut the keyway, now normally I'd recut the keyway 180 degrees on the opposite side, but because this is out of a printing press and I don't know what part it does, on the other end of the shaft there's also a keyway and they're in line. Oop, there we are. So not knowing what this does we don't know if there's any timing involved with this thing so we'll recut the keyway in its original location. So we'll spray weld this and bore this and we'll get a nice neat fit and get rid of the cock and a shirt sleeve fit that we have there. Okay, that's cleaned up the shaft area so it gives us something parallel to work with. So we just, with the threading tool, cut a, a bit of a coarse finish where our build-up's going to go. And this will be a good key for the Uteloy powder to grab hold of. So we'll take it over the welding bench now and get her sprayed up. So when we do the spray build-up, we don't want to get any excess spray over the other part of the shaft. So I just had this, found this bit of scrap, just bored the inside of the collar out. So we'll just put this over the end. Give it a couple of taps to send it home. And that's all we do. So that will protect that, that shoulder and keep the spray in this area only. So I'll just have a quick clean up around the keyway with the pencil grinder and this will take out any, any grease and oils that are still stuck in there and will give a good bonding surface for the spray. Okay, that should be enough.
okay, we'll put let that cool down and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, that's our build up complete. So when this cools down, we'll pop it in the lathe and machine it to size. The only thing that does concern me, I tried to get a lot of build up on the end. I think I'm only just going to make it there where, where, where the diameter reduces down. Because we have to finish this at 17.5 millimeter. So yeah, she's sprayed up rather well. Okay, we've got it back in the lathe now with a steady rest on, and this will enable us to re-establish the centre and the end of the shaft. Okay, now we've only gone in with a centre drill, as you saw when we recut the centre. So this is a time where we clock off this other journal, and we're pretty well within half a thou. Now, if there was any more than that, I'd reset the steady up and put a tool in and cut the centre. But for what this does, she's pretty good. So we got away with that one. So good, good thing. So we'll carry on and start machining this down. We're just up on our finished size now, so looks like we've done alright with the build up. So what I'm going to do now is switch over to a high speed steel tool and just see if we can pick up on a surface finish. Swapping to the high speed steel, it's um, give us quite a uh, reasonable finish there now, so we'll stick with that and we'll just establish the size that we need to go down to. So we'll have to average out the wear in the mating part and then we'll come to a conclusion on the diameter to turn this to. So this is our mating gear that goes on, so we'll just get a bit of an idea where the most worn part is. And at this stage, we can just do this with a vernier. So that's about 17.1. So what we're going to do, we'll take our shaft down to 17.5 and we'll bore the gear to 17.5. So it should work out good. So we have got 0.95 of a mil to come off and then we'll be at size.
Okay, that'll be fine. It's just the spring seats up against that, so looks good. So I'll put a chamfer on. Okay, that's this part complete. So all we have to do now is take it over to the bridge port and mill the keyway. That's the trial first initial cut through, so I'll see how we're going for size. So we've got 0.3 millimetres to come off this. Take another cut. Let that run there. Oh, point oh seven shy, so I'll just take a tad more.
this gear is quite hard, so getting a bit of spring off the bar. Probably wouldn't get that with one of the Shark River carbide bars. We're no two five shy. Okay, take one more cut. Over there, 0.05 up, which is our clearance as this has to slide on the shaft and not wobble around like a cock in a shirt sleeve. It actually has a spring to it. That's exactly what we want. That's perfect. It's a nice sliding fit, so it has a spring, so this gear, it does actually there's some actuator goes on it, which the gear gets um, slid along, and there's, it gets packed with grease here. So that's good, good result. So we have our shaft clamped in our vise now, and because we're only clamping one end, we have some blocks and some shims to make up the same thickness as the diameter of the shaft so it's clamping parallel on the shaft so on the other end of the shaft we've just got a Starrett machinist jack and we've got a couple of gauge blocks set up here and let's swing you to a different angle we'll show you why so if you remember our original keyway was at 12 o'clock on this location here and this is what we have to pick back up on. So, the original one was in line with this keyway here. So to clock this keyway in the right position, we just put a square, machine a square, up against it. And you find anything, whatever fits. It's a neat fit, and I've just used this drill bit. As long as it's neat fit there, neat fit up the top, the other end there, that's as close as we can get to clocking that, that keyway in. So that'll put us in the right location. So we'll get an end mill or slot drill set up now. If we use an end mill it has to be a centre cutting end mill. But normally I do prefer to go with a slot drill personally. It's personal preference when I do a keyway. So 
So we're just using this contraption to center our part. So whatever reading we get on the last reading here, the last reading on the other side must be the same. And we just adjust the table across in or out to suit. So, I mean this, I didn't make that part. That's a bit above my pay grade. I just made that part. <laughs> Handy bit of gear. Stephen Gotswinter has the plans for these things. They're a bit of handy little indicator holder. So we'll get a slot drill set up now in the collet chuck and cut our keyway. Now we're doing a 5mm keyway, but the best cutter we got is a 3 um, slot drill. Now Old busted ass Bruce, who has been doing this job for. Give me one of his carbide 5mm M mills. But on the end, the thing's chipped and rooted, so I'm not going to use that. So we'll just do the step over thing. We've got an indicator set up on the table, so we just got an in, uh, offset uh, 0.119 either side of centre, and that'll bring us to our 5mm width. So crank up the bridge port.
Okay, I'll try a key in it. Beautiful. Nice fit that. Perfect. Okay, we'll deburr this and assemble it up. This is there's a bearing to go on there, a um, spring, and then the gear. And a circlet. Oh well that was a good result, so what the the gear has a drive dog on the end. And a spring and a bearing, so she slides nice and free without any slop in it. So that was what they wanted, so that's what they got. So that was an interesting little job, a bit of metal spray action and bits and pieces. So anyway, take care and we'll see you in the next video.